Hello and welcome to lecture 11 of our course on stochastic modeling of biological processes. In our previous lectures, we considered stochastic differential equations with multiple favorable states. Our illustrative example was the SDE326. We have chosen its parameter values so that the SDE326 has two favorable states, one around 100 and one around 400. The solutions of the SDE326 fluctuate around these steady states and occasionally switch between them, as we see in figure 3.1d. In our last lecture, we derived formula 363 for the average time to switch between favorable states of the SDE326. Today, we will turn our attention back to stochastic chemical systems, which we studied in chapters 1 and 2. Comparing figures 2.2a and 3.1d, we see a similar qualitative behavior. In fact, I deliberately chose my parameters in both models so that their favorable states are around the same values, 100 and 400. Our main question for today is, can we use the analysis which we developed for stochastic differential equations, also in the case of stochastic chemical systems? As you can see, there are some similarities between these two figures, but there are also some differences. In the figure on the right, we presented the behavior of AT, which described the number of molecules of chemical species A. In particular, AT can only take integer values. On the other hand, stochastic differential equation 326 is written for continuous random variable XT. So we have variable xt in r and the variable at in integers. If we want to apply our stochastic differential equation theory, we need to extend the values of a to non-integer values. In this lecture, we will present the chemical Fokker-Planck equation, which approximately describes chemical systems. So our main approach to this question is to first approximate the chemical system to 1 using a stochastic differential equation. Once we do that, we can apply the theory developed in chapter 3, which we discussed in our previous three lectures. First, let us consider the degradation and production system, which we know very well. It is the system 1.9, which is also included at the beginning of section 3.7 as system 3.65. We discussed in detail how it can be analyzed and simulated in the computer in chapter 1. In figure 1-2a, we use the Gillespie algorithm to calculate illustrative stochastic realizations and we calculated its stationary distribution in figure 1-2b using both stochastic simulations and an analytical approach which was based on the chemical master equation. The chemical master equation is the equation for Pn which is the probability that there are any molecules of chemical species A in the system at time t. It has been given as equation 111 in the lecture notes, and we have covered the methods for solving the chemical master equation in chapter 1. In section 3.7, I have rewritten it in a slightly different but equivalent form using functions h1 and h2 defined by equation 367. Now, if n is large, then 1 is very small compared to n. So we could approximate the first two terms by the derivative of h1 and the second two terms by the derivative of h2. To do this, we have to extend the values of h1 and h2 to non-integer values. So let us assume that this is possible by interpolation. Let us assume that h1 and h2 are defined for all real values of the first parameter. Then we can use a Taylor series to approximate the first two terms by the first two derivatives of h1 and the second two terms by the first two derivatives of h2. Therefore, using the Taylor series, we derive equation 370. The first two terms correspond to the first two terms in the master equation and the remaining two terms corresponds to these two terms in the master equation. Rearranging these terms, we derive the chemical Fokker-Planck equation in the following form, where drift and diffusion coefficients are given by 372 and 373. 
Once we have the chemical focal Planck equation in this form, we can apply all the techniques discussed in chapter 3 to this system. Before doing that, we could also ask the question, why did we use the first two terms in the Tyler series? We could also use just the first one. If we do that, then the second derivative terms will be missing, and our focal Planck equation is the first order linear partial differential equation, which we have discussed in detail in lecture 8. It can be solved using the method of characteristics, which our students in Oxford cover in their introductory course on differential equations. In particular, the presented technique gives us a way to establish the relationship between the deterministic and stochastic models of chemical systems. We have seen in chapter 2 that there can be significant differences between deterministic and stochastic modeling. In lecture 7, we have discussed section 2.7 where we showed that one ordinary differential equation system can be a deterministic model of many different chemical systems, which can have very different stochastic dynamics. In particular, our examples in Chapter 2 highlighted that the classic deterministic ODE modeling can be irrelevant when describing average properties of stochastic models. However, this technique can be used to derive the classic deterministic model and show that it is a limiting model of stochastic systems in a suitable limit. In our case, we decided to truncate the Taylor series after the second term, so that we do not end up with deterministic differential equations, but with stochastic differential equations, or equivalently with the corresponding Fokker-Planck equation, which is shown here. Once we have the approximate stochastic differential equation description, we can use the techniques from our previous three lectures. One of them was calculating the stationary distribution, which is plotted in figure 34a on page 82. The gray histogram was obtained by the Gillespie algorithm, but we could also obtain it analytically by solving the stationary chemical master equation. We have done this in chapter 1, and we obtain the following Poisson distribution. The red line is the stationary distribution obtained from the chemical Fokker Planck equation. In a figure 3 4 b, we calculate the time to leave the interval minus infinity 19, given that the simulation started with y molecules of A in the system. We know that the number of molecules fluctuate around the value 10 for our parameter values. So for any starting values between 0 and 12, we relatively quickly return back to the favorable state 10 before escaping. So the escape time is constant for these initial conditions. This is confirmed by both the Gillespie algorithm and by the formula, which we derived during our last lecture for stochastic differential equations. To obtain the gray histogram, I started 10,000 realizations of the Gillespie algorithm at a given value, considering all initial conditions between 0 and 18. I estimated the average time when the system first reaches 19 molecules of chemical species A. The red line is obtained by this integral, which is derived from the chemical Fokker Planck equation. Considering a general system of n chemical species that are subject to Q chemical reactions, the chemical Fokker Planck equation is given as equation 380 in the lecture notes. Here, alpha j is the propensity function of the jth chemical reaction and new ji is the change in the number of i chemical species by one occurrence of the j reaction. It looks complicated, but it reduces to simple equations for simple chemical systems. Students interested in theoretical derivations could derive the chemical Fokker Planck equation from the corresponding chemical master equation, which is written for general chemical systems as equation 378 in the lecture notes. In our course, we have chosen an example-based approach and we are not developing a formal theory of chemical reaction systems. So here I would like just to note that similar ideas could be formulated in general. In particular, if we truncated the Taylor expansion after the terms corresponding to first derivatives, then the red terms will be missing here. And we could use this to think about suitable limiting processes in which the deterministic ODE models can be derived from stochastic models. However, it is not our aim to develop such a general theory in this course, and we instead focus on some examples. In section 3.8, we present the analysis of stochastic chemical system 2.1, one, 
which is also given as system 381 at the beginning of section 38. It is a system of four chemical reactions for one chemical species. In section 21, we showed that its deterministic description has two stable steady states. And we also presented results calculated by the Gillespie algorithm, which showed that the system is capable of switching between its two favorable states, provided that we observe it for sufficiently long time. To analyze this chemical system, we can use the chemical master equation, which appears in section 2.1 as equation 2.6. Since there are four chemical reactions in this system, the chemical master equation has eight terms on the right hand side. There are two terms for each chemical reaction, corresponding gain terms with plus signs and loss terms with minus signs. The first two terms corresponds to reaction 3A goes to 2A. The next two terms corresponds to reaction 2A goes to 3A. The next two terms corresponds to degradation of A. And the last two terms corresponds to the production of A. I can also write the chemical master equation exactly in the same form as I did with the degradation production system in the first part of this lecture. Here I have introduced functions H1 and H2, which are different than before, and take into account different reactions of chemical system 2-1. But the resulting form of the chemical master equation is the same as I had before. In particular, I can just follow the same formal procedure to derive the chemical Fokker-Planck equation. It is given as equation 382 in the lecture note, with drift and diffusion coefficients expressed in terms of the rate constants K1, K2, K3, and K4. In particular, we can again apply the results of stochastic differential equations from chapter 3 to analyze the behavior of this chemical system. This is illustrated in figure 3.5 on page 86 where I plot the stationary distribution in the left panel. The yellow histogram was obtained by the Gillespie algorithm and the blue line by the formula 356, which we obtained by solving the stationary Fokker-Planck equation. In the same way, we can also compare the results computed by the formula for the average time to leave the domain minus infinity xu, which we obtain for the stochastic differential equations with the results calculated by the Gillespie algorithm which are presented as this yellow histogram. This comparison is presented in figure 3.5b. Additional analysis of the chemical system 2.1 is left as exercise 3.8, which is a natural continuation of exercise 2.3. In both exercises, you are asked to study the behavior of the chemical system 2.1 for different values of the parameter k 4 u to get some insights into the model behavior, you can start with the deterministic ordinary differential equation model. You will find out that the system has three steady states for a range of parameter values, including the parameter values which we used in our lectures. There are two stable steady states and one unstable steady state between them. For smaller values of the parameter k4 nu, there is only one smaller steady state, while for larger values of the parameter k4 nu, there is only one larger steady state. In exercise 2 3, you are also asked to use the Gillespie algorithm to study the time evolution of the system for four values of the parameter k4 nu, including parameter regimes when ODEs have only one steady state and parameter regimes when two favorable states of the system exist. In exercise 3.8, you are asked to apply the results of sections 3.7 and 3.8 to analyze the chemical system to 1 for a range of parameter values using the chemical Fokker-Planck equation. In particular, you will also reproduce figure 3.5 from the lecture notes. But you will also go beyond that and again study how the stationary distribution depends on the parameters. In this simple example, you should aim to get the results from all three approaches matching perfectly each other. That is, there should not be a visible error between the results obtained from the stochastic simulation, the chemical master equation, and the chemical Fokker-Planck equation. The yellow histogram should match both exact and approximate analysis. 
This brings me to the end of our discussion of chapter 3, where we have discussed the chemical Fokker-Planck equation. The chemical Fokker-Planck equation can be used for the analysis of chemical reaction systems, and there are two sections with examples and illustrations. Please read pages 80 to 87, which covers sections 37 and 38 of the lecture notes, before watching the video of lecture 12. Thank you for listening to lecture 11 of our course on stochastic modeling of biological processes. Bye-bye.